Welcome to our tutorial on the payback period. Here is the outline for today's video. We'll begin with discussing the payback period rule. Then we will see a variation of that called the discounted payback period. Then we will compare this rule with the net present value rule. And at the end of the tutorial, we will have an exercise for you to test your knowledge. There are thumbnails in the video description, so if you would like to jump ahead to a particular section, feel free to do so. Okay, let's get started with explaining what the payback period is. To, to illustrate that, let's use a simple example. So let's say we have an investment project which generates uh, annual cash flows, and let's say we have five years, okay? And let's suppose this project costs uh, 10000 dollars to invest today okay and let's say it will start generating cash flow starting from next year so three thousand in the first year two thousand in year two and let's say four thousand in the remaining three years okay so these are our cash flows okay annual cash flows with an investment or a cash outflow in year zero which is now and cash in inflows in years ahead. Now, payback period is the answer to the following question. So let's say as a manager or as an investor, you'd like to understand how long it will take you for you to recover your original investment of $10,000, okay? So the answer to that question is the payback period, okay? So to, to see how long it takes, we can keep sort of a profit loss balance, right? So now, because we just paid 10,000, at the moment we have a loss of $10,000, but next year we will be paid 3,000, right? So this will actually reduce our loss to 7,000. Have we recovered yet our original 10,000? No. So we are not paid back within one year, right? How about in the second year, we get another 2,000 and our loss reduces to 5,000, but we still haven't recovered our original 10,000. So we, we've so far we have recovered half of it. Year three, we get another 4,000. Now we are getting closer. At the moment, our loss has reduced to 1,000 but the payback period is still going to be longer than three years, okay? Because we still haven't recovered the remaining 1,000. At the end of year four, we, will have get, we would have got another 4,000. So now, actually, uh, we are running a profit, right? And that profit will increase by another 4,000 in year five, which will become 7,000 in total. So which tells us that our payback period is somewhere between three and four years, right? So this is the moment we sort of um, move from a, move away from a loss to a profit, okay? So is it three years? No, it's longer than that. Is it four years? No, it's less than that, right? So it's between three and four years. And to find out exactly how long, we need to look at the remaining balance, which is 1,000. And we need to see how much we get in the year, 4,000. So if it takes a year to get 4,000, how long does it get to get to recover 1,000? And it is 1,000 over 4,000, right? So I'm trying to recover this remaining 1,000. And if it takes a full year to get 4,000, 1,000 is covered in a quarter of a year. So the payback period is three full years plus a quarter of a year, 0.25. So the payback period is 3.25 years. To recap, for me to recover my original investment of 10,000, I need to wait 3.25 years, okay? And then I need to decide whether this is good enough for me or not. On our website, we actually have a very handy uh, payback period calculator to automatically make these calculations. So you can check it out. The link is in the video description. So as you can see, this is our original investment. 
These are our cash flows. Remember, we had five of them. We just entered them, and you automatically get the payback period as 3.25, which is the answer we got. And we will move on to discount payback period in a second. The calculator um, has capacity to calculate that as well. Okay, with that, let's now move on to discussing uh, the discounted payback period, right? One disadvantage of the payback period is that it ignores the time value of money, right? So it tells you how long it takes for you to get the money back, but it doesn't take into account uh, the present values of the cash flows. And that is a key drawback, right? So if we remember the cash flows, we started with an outlay of $10,000, then we got 3,000 in the first year, 2,000 in the second year, and 4,000 in the remaining three years. So these were the cash flows, right? And on that basis, we said that payback period is 3.25 years. Now, discounted payback period is more precise because it makes the same calculation on the basis of these, uh, on the on the ba on the base of present values of these cash flows. So to illustrate that, let's assume a discount rate of 15%. Okay, so let's use discount rate of 15%. Now the initial outlay is happening now, so no need to calculate present value now. Now this 3000 will become 3000 divided by 1.15, right? The present value of this cash flow because it's in one year's time. So this will become 2000, 115 to the power two, because this is year two. This will be 4000, 1.15 to the power three, and so on. You get the idea, right? Now, the, these are the present values of the cash flows. And I can do again the profit loss thing, which I did before to get the payback period. And because now I'm discounting these cash flows, the discounted payback period will be longer than 3.25. Okay, so by taking the time value of money into account, the payback period will get longer. And again, I can use the same calculator quickly to find the answer. So all I did here is the remaining outputs are exactly the same. I simply changed the discount rate to 15%, which was originally zero. So our original answer holds. So it's 3.25 years for the payback period. And for the discount payback period, as you can see, it's longer than four years. So it's almost four and a half years. To recap, so these are the cash flows we um, studied in our example. So with, without the time value of money, so with the regular payback period, we have 3.25 years, okay? So after 3.25 year passes, we recover our original $10,000. And with the discounted payback period, it's longer, so it's almost four and a half years, so approximately four and a half years, okay? So discount payback period, as I said earlier, will always, always be longer than the payback period. Now, I would like to also compare uh, the um, payback period rule with the net present value rule. So if you look at textbooks, for example, finance textbooks, they always, advocate the use of the NPV rule, and that's for good reason, because payback rule has it is a very practical rule, but it has major drawbacks. So, you know, discounted payback period is better in the sense that it at least takes into account the time value of money, but even that is far from perfect. And to illustrate why the NPV rule is better, have a look at these two projects. Right, project A and project B, both are four-year projects, and the initial investment is identical. And let's suppose we only have $20,000 to invest, so we have to choose between these two projects. Now, let's make that decision based on the payback period rule, right? So 
On that basis for project A, we can see that the payback period is simply one year. Okay. Why? Because in year one, I already get my 20,000 back, right? Whereas project B has a slower start, it generates 15,000 in the first year, right? So for this one, the payback period is longer than a year. It's somewhere between one to two years, okay? So if I strictly adhere to the uh, payback period rule, I must prefer project A because it pays me faster. And by the way, there's no magic number about the payback uh, period cutoff point, right? So it, it is a subject of choice. So you need to think, is two years good enough for you, three years, and so on, right? And even as a person, your preferences might change over time. So there's a lot of subjectivity involved there as well, which is another drawback. But leaving that aside, based on the payback period rule, because A is paying me back faster, let's say I go with that. And that would be a pretty terrible choice because a key drawback of this rule is that it ignores the cash flows that occur after the payback. And project B is doing so much better in years two to four compared to project A, right? It starts slow, but every year the cash flows, so this actually should be 60,000, so there's a type. Apologies for that, so this must be 60,000. Every year the cash flows are doubling, okay? So would you rather get 20,000 in year four and or 120,000, right? So clearly project B is superior to project A and the NPV would capture that, right? So even if the discount rate is really high, which would let's say have the discount the cash flows in the future, even at a pretty high discount rate of 50% and PV of the second project is $44,000 compared to uh, an PV of 12,000 for the first project, okay? So project B is a lot better than A and that's what we should choose. And in this case, we should really uh, sort of uh, ignore the payback period, right? So this doesn't mean that the payback period rule is useless. It's still a helpful practical tool that sort of complements other tools and that supports decision making. But our first choice should always be the net present value. Okay. Now the final part in this video is an exercise for you, okay, for you to test your knowledge. And here's the question. And the solution is provided in the video description. There's a link to follow, which is actually the same page as, as the uh, payback period calculator. Um, and the question is this. So Lindsay has an opportunity to invest in a project that costs $10,000. And here are the cash flows of that project, okay? And the discount rate of this project is 20%. So the question is, should Lindsay invest in this project if her objective is to recover her investment within four years. So we need to help her out and make a decision, okay? Right, that's it uh, uh, for, from me for this uh, tutorial on payback period. I hope you found it useful and looking forward to see you in the next video. Bye for today.